All right, I'm having to redo this video because I, I forgot a part of it. And I didn't want to have it in two parts, so I'm going to put it all in one. Now it's almost 6.30 in the morning. But what happened is, I went to a full gospel businessmen's breakfast meeting, or maybe it was a men's church breakfast meeting one morning, and afterwards, all of us men got together and held hands and were praying. And one man said that, uh, asked that we pray for his son because he was in the hospital from a drug overdose. So after we prayed, I went and asked him about what his son's name was and where he was. Because, you know, God says that we're to go visit those who are, are sick and in prison and all those other things. So after the meeting, I went to the hospital to visit the guy. Didn't know him. I went in there, and he's in there with his girlfriend. Not looking too good. Got IVs in his arm. His girlfriend's all worried. And I shared the dream with him that I'm about to share with you. Now, you know, a lot of people, you have to be very careful. A lot of these people, you see them all over the Internet. They have these dreams. Oh, I have a dream. I have a dream. And they try to say they're prophetic and, and try to tell you that God told you that, that they were prophetic or something. But let me tell you, and I have a video on that you, you ought to watch called False Prophets Part 1, which covers part of Jeremiah 23, which deals a lot with these dreamers and with other false prophets. But let me get to the dream. I go to this carnival with my son. You know, He, he was pretty young and... I pulled out my wallet, I gave him some money so he could go have some fun, and, and I looked and I had $77 in my wallet. So I'm walking along and here comes three of my old buddies. And they say, hey Raul, let's go get high. And I, I was real reluctant, but you know, it was kind of like a peer pressure type of thing. So I said, all right. And, in between two of these booths, you know, it was like a, a regular carnival. You had all the booths along, you know, where the ring toss and dart throwing and, and whatever else. And, and in between two of them was this a door, just a steel frame and a door. And they opened it. And I mean, and you could see around the sides of the door, just a big open field behind it. But they opened it. They stepped through. And I began to step through. And before my one foot even touched the ground, I said, oh, no, no, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to. And, and I turned around and backed away. And the next thing you know, I'm walking along, and here's this guy, bald-headed guy with a beautiful woman underneath each arm. And uh, he says, hey, Raul, how you doing? And I looked at him, and I said, do I know you? He says, yeah, you know me real good. And I'm thinking, this guy doesn't look familiar to me. But just then, I'm I'm approaching this big, steep hill. You know, I, well, not big. It's 20, 25 feet, but it had a very steep incline. It wasn't something you're going to walk down or you might slip. You know, it got to where you have to run as you get towards the bottom. Well, just as I get to the top of it, I feel the guy pat me on the butt. And so it's too late. I'm going down the hill and I get to the bottom and I thought, wow, that was really strange. And I, I reach back to feel for my wallet and my wallet's gone. And I looked and he's running up the hill and, and there's a cop and I, I, well, there was two cops and I started yelling, hey, hey, stop that guy. He stole my wallet. He's got my wallet. And they just watched him run on by. Then there's another cop and I'm yelling and there's other people up there and I'm yelling, they didn't do anything about it. So I'm running up the hill after him, and I catch him. I wrestle him to the ground, and I'm not trying to hurt him. I'm just trying to get my wallet back. And I'm, I'm feeling around, trying to get my wallet. And two of these cops come and grab me. And they started threatening me and telling the guy, go ahead, go on. I said, hey, no, no, the guy stole my wallet. You heard me yelling at y'all when he was running up the hill. I want my wallet back. And they're telling him, go, go. So he leaves. And... and Next thing you know, I take off after him. And he goes down that same hill by where I'd first seen him at. And he runs into this a little building, like a little house there. And I go inside, 
and all the windows are boarded up. There's a bunch of cardboard boxes in the room. And he's on the other side. It was a large room, maybe 15 by 30. It was like just one little house with no, no rooms to it or anything. And so I said, hey, man, I want my wallet back. I said, hey, I want my wallet. So I go up, and I grab him, and I get him in a headlock. And once again, I'm, I'm feeling around his pockets looking for my wallet. And as I'm doing that, his head started growing. As I had him in the headlock, and it just kept growing and growing until it got like four times its size. And it's been a while since I had this dream. I, not horns didn't come out, but it, it grew to a huge size. And then he grabbed me and he threw me like 20 feet into the air, in the air on top of all these boxes. And I thought, oh no, this ain't happening. He's not going to steal from me <laughs> and think he's going to kick my butt too. So I run up to him, and I gave him a series of punches, like five or six good hard punches in the face, and it didn't phase him one bit. And I thought, uh-oh, this isn't good. So I turned around to look to where the door was, thinking maybe I need to get out of here. And he's approaching me, and I said, if God be for you, who can be against you? And he went, oh, it was just like I'd hit him with a good punch. And I, I gave him another scripture verse. And, ooh, and by the time I gave him like the fourth verse, and every time I did, it was like a big hard punch to this devil. Anyway, so he goes running out the door. So I go chasing him. And he goes across his road, gets into this field, and he turns around in front of, there was a, an old bus there, a broken down bus which had a, a front and a back door, like the regular, like school bus doors, but one on the front and the back. And he turns around and he says, you're in trouble now. And I'm thinking, nah, I got plenty more scriptures for him. But all of a sudden, I look at the bus and a bunch of demons start coming out of the doors and all these heads pop up at all the windows looking at me. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. I could be in trouble now. I'm going to handle all these. And I looked around to see if there was anybody to help me. And I, I started to pray. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes all these, well, three or four men, maybe, maybe more, and dressed in beautiful, just pure white gowns. And they were just going along with their, their hands in front of them and their heads down praying. And they walk back and forth between me and these adversaries. And as they did, that devil did like the wicked witch of the West in the Wizard of Oz. It was like somebody had poured that holy water on her or on him. And he was just fizzling into the ground with smoke coming up, just like that witch from the Wicked of uh, the Wizard of Oz. And meanwhile, the same happened to a lot of the demons that had come out of the bus. They were all over approaching me. And most of them were, were gone, but there were a few that were still alive. They were in really bad shape, but still alive. So that's when I woke up. And I said, wow, God. Man, I know that dream had to be from you. What was that all about? And he, he, he gave me all these scriptures, just, just bringing out everything in the dream that was happening. And, you know, one thing was when those old friends were trying to get me to go out and party with them, and I didn't go. You know, one of the things that will keep you from heaven is sorceries. It comes from the word pharmacopoeia. Same, you know, it has to do with drugs. And, uh, you know, sorcer neither sorcerers, no drunkards, no fornicators, or a bunch of us, you will not get into heaven. So if you're a person who is doing drugs, you need to stop. All right, secondly now, as I'm going along, and here comes that devil. And he had two beautiful women with him. And I used to be, uh, hmm, I was always having a lot of women. And I stopped that cold turkey, thanks to the Lord, years ago. I'd have probably been dead from AIDS by now. But, uh, 
and, and now I'm basically a born again virgin. But uh, anyway, make a long story short, you know, he patted me on the butt and he took my wallet. You know, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then as he's running up the hill and I'm trying to get all this help from police and, and other people, the world, the world ain't here to help you. Uh -uh. In fact, the cops grab me, the world would take you down. So, you know, then when I caught that guy, the devil in that house, you know, hey, take with you the word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, once I got with them over by the bus, and I started praying, and all these saints came through there praying for me, you know, Prayer has power. God says that the prayers of a righteous man avail much. You know that when Elijah stopped the rain for three years, it doesn't say that God did it because he was a prophet. It said he did it because Elijah was a righteous man. All right. Oh, and then, so I turn around after all this happens, and here comes my son walking up to me. And he's all excited. He says, Daddy, Daddy, look what I found. And he hands me this wallet. What well, was my wallet? And I looked in it, and there's my $77. You know, the Lord, if you're doing the right things, he's going to restore what the canker worm has taken. So anyway, now getting back to the hospital. Here this guy is, with these IVs. He's not looking too good. His girlfriend's looking really, really concerned. And as I'm sharing this dream with him, he sat up in the bed. His girlfriend was all eyes and ears. And by the time I finished that dream, he said, man, I'm never going to do drugs again. Yeah, and hopefully he started going to church with his dad or, or his girlfriend or something. I don't know. I never saw him again. But I just thought I'd share that with you. And, uh, and I just want to remind you, be sure to pray, be sure to read your Bible, and be sure to repent from your sins, because the time is short. That's why I'm doing these videos. I can't tell you exactly how much time I could tell you about, but I'm not going to do that. When I know more things, as the Lord keeps revealing things to me, then I will reveal the things to you. All right. That's all I got to say. Just... All you Christians, may you be blessed. I want you to know, well, I'm not going to get into that, but and all you who aren't Christians, the time is short. You better, you better do it now. You better start reading that word. You better accept Christ as your Savior. Because mm, I don't want to see you in hell. That would sadden me. Mm, I hate it when I know someone dies and they weren't saved. But I love it. When someone dies and they go to heaven, all the angels rejoicing, the Lord's rejoicing. And though I might be sad that they passed, I'm happy because they passed to a better place. May the same thing happen to you. Okay. See you.